I think this question comes from Kez. Thank you once again, Kez. Excellent question. And uh, let's just quickly have a look at it. Now, if mentioned figure 4.3 is the sphere of influence and range. Now, before I want to continue, let's just define what's the definitions of the sphere of influence and range. And I'm going to write them on the bottom of the page. Okay, because that's the first question as well. Define the term to sphere of influence and range. And then I'll quickly explain it to you. The sphere of influence. Okay. This is the area serviced by a business. It's the area serviced by a business that sells its goods or services. Okay, and when we look at range, just the concept, the definition of range, is the distance a person is willing to travel to buy the goods or service. Okay, very important. Now, the sphere of influence is the area. Okay, now the influence of how big is the area. Now remember the area, how big is it that, that will service the area. Now for instance, for instance, the product. How big do you think will people be willing, and if you look at the range, how, how far will people be able to travel to go and buy your product? Okay, but let me explain this first. We need to look at low order goods goods or services and we need to look at a high order goods and services. Okay, and I'm going to use the same examples that I've used in previous episodes. Now, low order goods and services, because they go hand in hand, and that I will explain the sphere of influence and the range. A low order goods is, for instance, bread or milk. Okay, I'm gonna write it over there. Bread or milk. Okay, that's a low order good product. And a service is gonna be like a barber. Person that cuts hair. Now, if you look at high order goods, Let's talk about a car garage, like Ferraris. And service is a brain surgeon. Okay, now coming to our two concepts, the sphere of influence, the area of service by business selling is good and services. Now what do you think? When we look at low order goods, okay, low order goods is bread and milk. Do you think the area is gonna be very big? No. Okay, because we use it on a daily basis. You go out to go and buy milk and bread on a daily basis. So the area where you go and purchase that product is not going to be very big. You can go, in fact, in a square five kilometer radius, you can go to a couple of places to go and buy that low order service. Okay, now goods. Same with a barber shop. You're not going to travel very far to go and get your hair cut, are you? No. So the sphere of influence for low order goods is going to be quite small. Okay, so you're not going to travel very far, like for instance, it's all around you. But the situation completely changes when we look at high order goods. Okay, high order goods, for instance, if you look at a product, think of a Ferrari. If you think of a service, think of a brain surgeon. Okay, now the sphere of influence for a brain sur surgeon is absolutely going to be massive. Because you're willing to travel very far, your range will be very far to travel to get to that service. Now, you, let's say, for instance, you live down in George, for example, and the best neurobrain surgeon is in Johannesburg. You will want to travel to go and see him, okay, because he's specialized. The same, you only get a Ferrari garage in Bryanston, 
and not all over the place in a small town like Valcom, for example, because you're willing to travel very far, the range will be exceptionally far to go and buy that product. But the sphere of influence of that Ferrari is absolutely massive because we only fire it in high order towns. Okay, vitally important. So that's the two definitions. But they've given us two examples, A and B. Okay, now I can immediately identify A as food and B as motor vehicles. So food is a low order good and motor vehicles is high order. Okay, now if you look at question 4.3.2, which product, food or cars, had a larger range? Now, if we go back to my definition, the range should distance a person is willing to travel to buy goods or services. Now, if you look at B, like I've mentioned, I, B is motor vehicles. People are much willing to travel much further for a car. Okay, if you see a good deal, and let's say you live in a small town like Pochestrum or Rustenburg, and you see a very good deal on a car in Elspreet, you're willing to travel that distance to go and buy that car. Now the question states, which product, food or cars, has a larger range? Definitely a car, right? People will not travel that far for food, okay? Right? Yes, we all love good pizza or a good steak, but I guarantee you people won't travel further than 200 kilometers just to go and have a steak or a certain pizza. So the correct answer over there will be car. Okay. 4.3.3, give a reason for your answer to question 4.3.2 because a car is high order. It's a high order goods and very important we can use this definition it's got a bigger sphere of influence the area serviced by the business it's got a bigger sphere of influence okay now, if you look at quickly, 4.3.4, .4, comment on the threshold population required for the motor vehicle sales. Now, first of all, let's just quickly define the threshold population. I'll write it down here on the bottom, so you can make notes as well. Okay, it's the number of people The business needs, okay, the number of people, a function, and when we talk about a function, it can be goods or services, must have, must serve in order to make a profit. Okay, now that's what it means. A threshold population is the number of people a function must serve in order to make a profit. Now, if you kind of think of it, right? If you think of low order goods, right? I'm just gonna explain, we're running out of time. So but I'm gonna explain this and explain it according to our low order and high order examples. Now, if you think of low order goods, right? You need to sell low order, how many breads and how many liters of milk do you need to sell to make a profit? Quite a lot, okay. You need to sell a lot of that product to be able to make a profit. The same with a barber shop, the guy cutting your hair. He needs to see many clientele every single day to be able to make a profit. But if you look at high order goods, right? For instance, and in services like a brain surgeon, you don't need that many clientele to make a profit because see, how many times are you gonna see a brain surgeon in your life? Hopefully never, okay. How many people can actually afford a Ferrari? Just a few, okay. So you don't need many clientele to be able to 
make a profit, okay? Because it's a very high order good. Now, if you look at the question, comment on the threshold population required for the motor vehicle sales, you need, the threshold population needs to be big, okay? As you can see, because you're selling a car. Now, if you look at question 4.3.5, describe two characteristics of settlement A, which is a low order center, it's low order center. As you can see, it's probably a rural settlement. Okay, we can mention that. And there's many low order centers. Okay, it focuses, focus on low order goods. Okay.